Well, we live in a day when people are filled with a lot of worry and a lot of insecurity, and all it really takes is just 30 minutes of watching the news, and that feeling increases, right? And uh, you, you look at the news and you go, what is going on in this world? And, and uh, folks kind of worry about tomorrow and about, uh, about their future and when they turn this age and when they turn that age. And so when I have those worries, I, I look to the Bible and I look to Charlie Brown. <laughs> Charlie Brown helps me get a lot of understanding about issues of the day. Charlie Brown said the other day in a comic I read, he said, don't worry about the world coming to an end tomorrow. It's already tomorrow in Australia. <laughs> I don't know if that helps you, but it helped me, right? Some folks just struggle with worries. A principal was walking through his uh, hallway of his school, and he saw one of his new teachers standing by the locker, and the guy's just pounding his head into the locker pounding his head into the locker, and he's saying, why are you even here? How did you get yourself into this? And the principal put his hand on his shoulder, and he said, hey, man, are you going to be okay? Is, is everything all right? And this teacher looked at him, and he said, yeah, I'll be fine just as soon as I can get this kid out of this locker. <laughs> you see, sometimes we go through our day, and we have worries and difficulties, and Certainly that was true for the church at Ephesus. They had a lot to be concerned about. They were a brand new group of believers. They were living in the midst of a hostile environment, a government, a Roman government that hated Christianity. They wondered about death. They wondered about eternal life. And the Apostle Paul writes to them this letter called Ephesians so that they might know how secure they were in Jesus Christ. God wanted them to know that they did not need to worry about tomorrow, that he had tomorrow taken care of. And God wants us to know that no matter what happens tomorrow, he's already there. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He wants us to have faith in the new life that he has provided. And I want you to notice in your notes this morning the focus of our faith. I want to show you where God wants us to be focused, the focus of our faith. Notice in verse 12 that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. Would you say that last half of the verse with me, please? Who first trusted in Christ. Now, God has saved us through Jesus Christ, and we are to live for him and with him as the focus of our life. We see this first phrase here who first trusted Christ. And we see that we trust in Christ. If you are a true born-again Christian this morning, you're not trusting in the Roman Catholic Church. You're not trusting in the Baptist Church. You're not trusting in the fact that Granddaddy was a Baptist preacher. If you are a real Christian this morning, a biblical Christian, you are trusting in Christ. And this is what Paul was reminding them of. He said, you first trusted in Christ. And, and this phrase, first trusted, it, it implies a lifelong trust, a trust that began somewhere, but a trust that will never end. It is a trust for salvation. But not only do we trust in Christ, God says those of us who trust in Christ are to live for his glory. We are to live for his glory. So look at that verse again, verse 12. That we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. Now there are two ways that God is glorified through my life and yours. First of all, he is glorified when we trust his son, Jesus Christ. When we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, it brings glory to God. He is redeeming us. He is bringing us together as his bride. And we are the redeemed, those who are saved. But secondly, we glorify God as we live for him, as we show forth his grace that is present in our lives. Ephesians 3 and 21 says, unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all the ages. So, for example, this past week I was speaking to a man and, and I was talking with him about the Lord and I said to him, do you know so and so? And I named one of your names. I said, he lives near you over there on 22nd Street West where you live. And he said, oh, I know him. He said, you know, he is really different than he used to be. He said, his life is much different. 
I got to tell you something. That was a great testimony to the glory of God. You see, when someone says about you, that guy used to cuss like a sailor, but something's different about him now. Or they used to fight like cats and dogs, but something's different about them now. You know who gets glory from that? God gets glory from that. So God says, I want you to focus on my son, trust in my son, and I want you to give glory to my son through the life that you live. I heard about a young girl that was saved in a church, and she wanted to become a member of that church, and so she had to sit down with one of the deacons and tell how she had been saved, and he had to ask her some questions and so forth even before she could get baptized in that particular church. And he said to her, he said, now... Uh, were you a sinner before you received the Lord Jesus Christ? And she said, oh, yes, I was. He said, now, are you a sinner now that you've received the Lord Jesus Christ? She said, sometimes I feel like I'm even more of a sinner. He thought, wow. He said, then have you truly been born again? I mean, are you sure that you're saved? And someone who just flippantly keeps on sinning, I suppose that's a valid question. But the young lady said, well, she said, I don't quite know how to explain it except I used to be a sinner running after sin, and now I'm a sinner running away from sin, you see. You see, when you accept Jesus as your Savior, you don't just live for sin anymore. You live for Jesus. Jesus is the focus of our faith. Everything that we do in life should have this question, what would Jesus do? He is the focus of our faith. You see, when people focus on a strong personality or a pastor or an evangelist or a fellow Christian, sometimes they'll get disappointed. But it's not the fault of the pastor that fell. It's the fact that they were not focusing on Jesus in the first place. You know what my job is? My job is to point you to Jesus Christ. The focus of our faith is Jesus. But notice, secondly this morning, the foundation of our faith. Where does it all begin? What is the foundation of our faith? Look at verse 13, if you would. The Bible says, and by the way, this is a great verse, and I want you to dig into it with me this morning. Verse 13, it says, In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. The foundation of our faith is the Word of God, the Bible. And I want you to notice letter A, we hear the Word. Nobody ever becomes a Christian until they hear the Word of God. And you see that in verse 13, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the Word of truth. So if you're here this morning and you are saved, then somewhere along the line you heard the gospel. Someone showed you from the Bible the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. And that even though we fall short in our sin, that we can be reconciled to God through Jesus Christ. And you see, you heard the word of truth. Now look in your notes at this other verse, 1 Thessalonians 2.13. It says, For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. Now folks, i got to tell you something. Just like the Ephesian church and the Thessalonican church of the first century received the word of God as it is in truth, the word of God. We need to sit here this morning, and when we open the Bible, we need to recognize God wants to speak to me right now, and I'm going to receive what God has to say. And sometimes the scriptures comfort us, and we like that. And sometimes the scriptures convict us, and we don't always like that. But whatever the scripture says is exactly what we need. You see, you don't look for a church that simply makes you comfortable. You look for a church that preaches the Bible. The fact of the matter is that if you went to the doctor tomorrow, and the doctor took an x-ray of your body, and the doctor saw something terrible there, you don't want him to come to you and go, it's all good, see you later. You want to know what the issue is. And I want to tell you something. God's Word will show you exactly what the diagnosis is and exactly what the remedy is too. It's a wonderful book, the Bible. And we must hear it because it's the foundation of our faith. Now notice the phrase in verse 13. It says, In whom ye also trusted after ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. 
You see, when you hear the gospel, you can be saved. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Let's say that together. Faith cometh by, and hearing by the, sometimes people say, well, I'm saved because once I was in a hospital and everything was dark and it got bright. Well, that's because they turned the lights on. I mean, that's a wonderful thing. But we're not saved by experience. We're saved by the word, you see. Or sometimes people have said, well, I'm saved because I turned over a new leaf and I'm doing much better now. And that's awesome. But salvation must always be connected to the Word of God because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. God's Word is the incorruptible seed. It's the only way that spiritual life is ever born. And this is what Paul did at Ephesus. In fact, if you want to learn a little bit about ministry, look in your notes at Ephesians 2, 2017. It says, and from Miletus he sent to, the, to Ephesus, and he called the elders, or the pastors of the church. And when they were come to him, he said to them, ye know from the first day that I came into Asia, after what manner I have been with you at all seasons, serving the Lord with all humility of mind and with tears and temptations, which befell me by the lying in wait of the Jews. Notice this. And how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have showed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house. Paul says, when I was with you at Ephesus, I taught you the Bible publicly and from house to house. And everything that was profitable for you, I told you what the Bible says. You see, you'll never have the foundation of the new life until you recognize the Word of God is our foundation. Romans 10, 14 says, How then shall they call upon Him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe on Him in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Why do we bring these missionaries here next week? Why do we pass out little cards and commit our finances to them? Because how are people in the Middle East ever going to know there's something better than a false faith unless they hear about Jesus Christ? How are people in Africa and Asia even going to have the chance except they have a preacher? And it's our privilege here in America where we are blessed to send the gospel to these places. And that's why we have the missions conference so that other people who've never heard can hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the word is the gospel. And the word is God's truth. And Jesus said, Father, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And so people must have the gospel of Jesus Christ and we must hear the word of God then notice secondly we must believe the word of God now notice what it says in verse 13 in whom ye also trusted that's the beginning that's the focus point on Christ after that ye heard that's the foundation the word of truth the gospel of your salvation notice this next phrase in whom also after that ye believed so if you're here this morning and you're saved You heard the word of God, and you trusted in it, and you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible says that whosoever believeth on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And Paul says, after that ye heard, ye trusted. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name given under heaven, whereby we must be saved. And so you were very blessed and wise to put your faith in Jesus Christ, because there's no salvation in any other name other than the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said to Thomas, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. And so we believe what the Bible says about Jesus Christ. And what a wonderful thing it is. This past week, there have been so many people in Lancaster who have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Even at a funeral service this Thursday for a wonderful man who's in heaven today, Many people in that service prayed to trust Christ as Savior. People called the church, and they talked to the secretaries and the assistant pastors, and they said, we've been watching the funeral service on television, and we've never heard about Jesus like that. What do we need to do to know that we're going to heaven? And people were leading people to Christ over the telephone. One of our ladies went across the street to one of her friends, and and she was visiting with her, and she said, "I, I go to Lancaster Baptist. You ought to come. She said to her neighbor, she said, I just watched 
the service at Lancaster Baptist. I've never heard the gospel like I heard it today. And the lady from our church led her to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ on her front porch. There were men at work uh, out at Edwards and here at Plant 42 who were watching the funeral service. And some of the men of our church said, Pastor, I've tried to talk to my friend about Jesus for many years and he wouldn't let me. But he listened to the gospel, the entire gospel. He watched it on television. I'm telling you, when people hear the word, then they can believe on the word but they've got to hear it they've got to hear it then they can believe on the word first the bible says in john 5 24 he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation but is passed from death unto life so we must hear it and we must believe it now the focus of our faith is jesus And the foundation of our faith is the Word of God. But notice thirdly this morning, the future of our faith. Where is it all taking us? The future of our faith. The focus of our faith is Jesus. The foundation of our faith is the Word of God, which we hear and believe. But now the future. Look at verse 13 again. It says, In whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Now, everybody wants to know about the future. You know, what's going to happen with interest rates? What's going to happen with the stock market? What's going to happen with the election? Everybody wants to know. And isn't the election comical? We haven't had comedy like this in a long time. And sometimes with the election, you're voting for the lesser of two evils, and I understand that. But God does not want us to have any insecurity about our ultimate hope. God tells us in verse 13 that we are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession. Now, folks want to know about the future. I heard of a fellow that was at an airport a while ago, and There was lightning and thunder everywhere, and all the flights were delayed. He got really nervous. This is back when they had these little flight insurance policies, and you could pay 20 bucks and get $100,000 of life insurance for one flight. Boy, he thought, thought, you know what, I'm going to do this, and he bought that life insurance policy, and then he was pacing around, two-hour delay, three-hour delay. Finally, he went over to a Chinese restaurant. He sat down, and he was eating his Chinese lunch, and He had his little fortune cookie right at the end, and he opened it up, and it said, your recent investment will pay big dividends. (laughs) I don't know about you. That's not the fortune cookie I want right right after life insurance and right before a flight. We worry about our faith and our future. What's coming next? Well, let me tell you two things about your future, and we'll be done. First, our future is sealed. If you have heard the word and believed on Christ, your future is sealed, it is settled. Now look at that in verse 13. It says, after you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Now a lot of times people don't realize everything that happens when they get saved. They know that they're a sinner. They know that they want Jesus into their life as a Savior. We all realize we need help. We know that we want to go to heaven. And those are wonderful reasons to get saved. But I want to tell you that there are many wonderful things that happen to someone when they ask Jesus to come in. And amongst them is this sealing that takes place. This sealing of the Holy Spirit where your future, yes, your eternity is settled right then and there. I mean, when I accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior on April 5th, 1972, I didn't know it. But at that very moment, my future, my eternity was sealed by God. And it's a wonderful thing to know that. In fact, the Bible says it's sealed by the Holy Spirit who comes into the life of every believer. For the Bible says in Romans 9, 7, if we have not the Spirit, we're none of His. So every believer has the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 6, 19, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? So every believer, those who hear the word and believe Christ, every one of us have the Holy Spirit in us. He is our seal. In Bible times, the seal was a mark of ownership. Many times, kids.
kings would have a signet ring. And they would place that ring into hot wax. And they would put their seal on a document. Maybe that seal would mean they owned a forest of trees or they owned a tract of property. But it was a seal that designated ownership. And when God saved you, and when you received Christ as your Savior, the Holy Spirit said, "Mm, I put my seal on you, and I am with you, and I will never leave you, and nothing can break this seal away. Nothing can take my love away from you. No demon can possess you. No false religion can take you. If you are truly saved, it's settled in heaven until the day of your redemption. Now, a lot of people wonder about, boy, sometimes I don't feel saved And they kind of live on their emotional basis. But God says, I want you to remember the foundation of faith is not how you feel tomorrow. It's what I said yesterday. It's what I put in my word. I want you to know it's settled forever and ever. The story is told of some German hikers who wanted to hike up the Matterhorn. And these two men were going to take this steep incline. And so they hired three guides and they roped up and They roped up in this pattern, guide, traveler, guide, traveler, guide. And they started up the hill, and unfortunately, the last guide slipped and lost his footing, and soon the next one, the traveler, slipped, and soon all had lost their footing except for the last guide, the one at the top. And that guide had driven a spike deeply into the ice. And because he held his ground, all the other hikers were able to recover themselves and get back up and continue to climb. And one preacher, after hearing the story, said this. He said, I am like one of those men who slipped. But thank God I am bound in a living partnership to Jesus Christ. And because he stands, I will never perish. And I want to tell you, my friend, if you're not saved this morning, you need to get tied up to Jesus Christ. And if you are tied up with Jesus Christ, and if you have been saved, I'll tell you about the Christian life, sometimes you're going to slip. Now, if you're trying to go out and sin, you maybe never got saved. People say to me, well, what about those people that just sin and sin and sin? The Bible says, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. No true Christian just goes out and commits fornication and adultery and drinking and just live in a party life after year after year after year. Christians don't live that way, but I will tell you something. Christians slip. Sometimes it's a thought. And the Holy Spirit convicts you, and you think to yourself, why was I thinking that? Sometimes it's anger. Sometimes Christians slip. I've pastored long enough. I've been a Christian long enough to know. There's no perfect Christian. Can I get an amen to that? But here's the good news. If you're tied to Jesus when you slip, he's going to pull you up, and you're not going to perish for all of eternity, and you're not going to spend eternity in hell if you have trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior. You see, your future is sealed. And then finally, your future is secure. Your future is secure. Now, a couple verses and we'll be done, but I want you to see them. Look at 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 4. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 4. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Now let's pause right there. It's one thing to make a reservation in a Hilton or a Marriott, but have you made a reservation in heaven? Because someone that's saved has a reservation in heaven. And then notice verse 5, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in that last time. My friend, we don't have to keep ourselves saved. We are kept by the power of God, you see. And so we see in this passage, our future is secure. It is secured because we have a permanent indweller, the Holy Spirit, who is securing us. John 14, 16 is in your notes. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. My friend, if you're saved this morning, the Holy Spirit brought you to church. Some might say, my wife brought me. I mean, she drugged me. (laughs) Well, friend, I'm going to tell you, when you get saved, the Lord will bring you. 
If you're saved this morning, the Holy Spirit will guide you into truth. He will comfort you. He is with you. And your future is secure because He indwells you. And then He guarantees to you that you will be with Him forever. Notice in 2 Timothy 2, 12, as we conclude this morning, if we suffer, we shall also reign with Him. If we deny Him, He will deny us. If we believe not, yet He abideth faithful, He cannot deny Himself. In other words, if there comes a moment in your life where you're filled with doubt and you wonder about the future, God says, I cannot deny myself if you truly were saved in the first place. I gave you my word that I would settle this in heaven and that you would spend eternity in heaven. And though you and I might doubt and though you and I might wonder, I'm here to tell you this morning, God never doubts when he gives his word. And so, make sure, my friend, that you have received Jesus Christ as your Savior. And if you have received Jesus Christ as Savior, then don't base your spiritual life on the emotions of a moment, but on the eternal Word of God who said, I will never leave you, and I will never forsake you. And so here, let's review this morning. The focus of our faith is Jesus Christ. Help me out. The focus of our faith is Jesus Christ after you trusted in him. The foundation of our faith is the word of God. And the future of our faith is a home in heaven because we have been sealed. Have you accepted Jesus Christ alone as your savior? Have you heard the word like you did this morning and believed on the Lord Jesus Christ? If you have, then you've been sealed by his spirit and one day you'll have a home in heaven. If you've never done that, don't go through this life without knowing that you're on your way to heaven. God wants you to know that you have eternal life. And I encourage you this morning to receive Christ, to hear this word and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved.